Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, today I have the Femi X8SE again. This is the uh, 2018 version, uh, not the 2020 version that's uh, that's going to be uh, coming out soon. Uh, really looking forward to that one. Uh, as you may recall, on my last flight with this guy, uh, I had an issue with a little bit of tilted horizon. Uh, and, and I had calibrated the gimbal beforehand, uh, but I did it again and then uh, I, well, let me back up just a little bit. There's a button in there, the, the, uh, Femi gives us a lot of control, which is awesome. Uh, you, in, the, in the app, there's a number of things you can do with the gimbal. So uh, the first thing I did was hit the button to reset it to factory parameters. Uh, and then I did a, a, a gimbal calibration. And then I, I went in and uh, I, did, I left the gain alone. They tell you that if you mess with that gain, you could affect vibration uh, of the gimbal. And they said, if you don't have any vibration, leave it alone. So I did. I think it's set at 100%. So it's I left it right there. And I think you can adjust it down and up from there if you want. Uh, that's an adjustment that I'm not exactly sure I understand, so I'm not going to mess with that. But uh, there is an adjustment there that you can adjust the uh, axes. So the the uh, uh, the, the horizontal axis, uh, I adjusted that, and uh, so that it was perfectly stable. Had it, of course, the drone on a on a flat uh, counter, and then looking at. Uh, an area where I could measure how flat that that was. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so we adjusted that to a perfectly flat horizon. So we're going to take it up here and see how it does and see how well it holds that horizon as well. So, uh, yeah, let me, uh, look, I've got a couple other ideas too. There's some things that I uh, looked at with regard to some of the intelligent flight modes that might be worth uh, looking at. Uh, in circle mode, I don't know if you remember my last video, I tried to set a point of interest, couldn't do it. I guess if you put that, if you click that button that says free, you can set a point of interest. So we'll mess around with some of that stuff and just see how it works. Like I said, fairly windy day today, 11 miles an hour sustained, 17 mile an hour gust. So, so we do have a little wind. Uh, it is about, uh, I don't know, roughly 50 degrees out here right now. So let's quit messing around. Let's get this little dude in the air. Okay, uh, the drone is uh, reporting ready to go. Uh, looking at the gimbal here, it looks uh, pretty straight right now, so that's a good thing. I'm going to quickly uh, go into that and show you that spot in the menu uh, where I adjusted the uh, gimbal calibration. You had to have the drone on to show that to you. So we go into advanced settings and uh, three axis adjustment adjust. I click on that and you'll see that the R axis I have it at uh, negative uh, 0.8 degrees. So uh, that was the level of adjustment that uh, that it took. So. Uh, Parameters will not be saved. Yeah, exit now. Yeah, we're not gonna So I see it then uh, Recalibrates the gimbal or the gimbal goes through its uh, process again uh, Once I get out of there. So uh, yeah, that's not a bad thing uh, So I just wanted to show that to you so you would uh, so you'd see what it was uh, I, I I did do a compass calibration uh, Beforehand here even though it didn't ask for it so we can look at the drone status here uh, it's telling us everything is normal. Magnetic environment is weak, so that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, okay, so I am going to start recording, and and we'll take off. And the first thing we're going to do is just do a couple of flights and take a look at the horizon, and let's see let's see how the drone does. I I'm looking at it here on the screen after I showed you that. Uh, that menu and it's just a tad crooked right now, but that doesn't mean anything. Let's take off here and uh, and see what we got. So we're going to do an auto takeoff on the app and let me get out of the way so you can see it. So 
So I love the way the drone uh, kicks those motors and it goes up about 13 and a half feet high uh, and it is showing yeah exactly 13 and a half feet so it's holding well I know you can't see it on camera I'm gonna bring it down here in just a second uh, just wanted to give it a good look at its landing zone so we're gonna bring it down and we have got some wind here so it's uh, it's definitely uh, moving it around Let's yaw around here, bring it over just a little, and let's bring it into the camera. So, yeah, I just want to make sure you got a good look at it. Bring it over here just a little. So, uh, let's, uh, let's just do a little jig back and forth to... Uh, uh, give that gimbal a chance to loosen up a little. Boy, I'll tell you what. You know, you make those, those, those are really quick, fast, hard maneuvers. And this drone holds its altitude really well. So, uh, yeah, uh, nothing to do now but to do a manual droney. So we're going to do uh, reverse and up now. Reverse. And up. See if I can adjust that gimbal at the same time. Point it down. Okay, we'll let it off. And let me, uh, let's pick up that gimbal, guys. Get our first look at the horizon. Wow, that looks pretty darn good. I mean, it's, I don't know. That's nothing you can complain about right there. So, uh, you know, maybe that adjustment uh, that uh, that I did uh, did it because that is a that is an awesome horizon. So, uh, and like I said, we've got some pretty good winds going on today. So let's uh, let's just fly it around a little bit and let's see how or if that affects the horizon. We're uh, we're up at about a hundred and roughly 160 feet coming right back to us and we're it's going into a headwind so this is full tilt in normal mode and we're getting up to about 25 miles an hour so I'd say that's pretty darn good especially with this wind so it's right over the top of us and I see that did uh, that did affect the uh, the uh, the horizon just a little in fact, uh, as I turn the drone, so it's slowly straightening out here. Yeah, so you know, it took it a second and it and it's flattened out that horizon again. Let's go to the corner here. We're not going to cross any across the road, but we're gonna, just going to go to this corner. And by the way, we are shooting in 4K30. Thirty frames per second. Okay, let's turn around and look the other way. Now that, what you're seeing there is the natural, uh, the land rises there. So that might look like it's a crooked horizon, but it's not. It's just the lay of the land. So uh, in the past, we've always uh, kind of taken a shot at the, uh, at the Boise front here. So let's, uh, I think we should go do that right now. We'll steer it around here a little bit and see if that affects the horizon. A yaw often will do that, so. Boy, I just love the, that the, the Boise Mountains off in the distance there. So right at the top there, and I'm gonna stop right here. Right at the top there is a, a ski resort called uh, Bogus Basin, and it's, it's literally like a 45 minute drive from downtown Boise, maybe not even that. Uh, so you know, pretty good, pretty good skiing, right? Right, just outside of Boise, although of course it's melting off fast now. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get through this uh, COVID-19 crisis and we can get back to normal, and uh, and I can get out and do some more scenic stuff with the drone. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, let's bring it back in here, and I want to try. Uh, some some different things in the intelligent flight modes now i'm looking at this and boy that's really yeah i mean it's crooked and then now it straightens out a little bit but uh, you know when i first turned it there when i first yawed it around 
but it is it is straightening it out and that also can be a function of the wind too now look at it, it's kind of tilting the other way so uh, so anyway let's uh, let's uh, let's bring her down here so uh, so one of the things that I wanted to do was a point of interest uh, with the uh, with the circle mode so I was my intention was to do that out in the field and circle myself out the but there's enough wind here that I'm probably not going to get good audio if I do that if I leave this Canon camera with the dead cat mic so I could record audio off of my iPhone here but in this wind it's it's not going to be very good so let's go up to the uh, let's go up to the cell tower and let's try that point of interest in circle mode and see see how that works. I've never done it before. Uh, I've used circle mode a lot on this drone, uh, but never have I ever uh, done that. So we are going to uh, raise some altitude here. And go over the top of the uh, tower of the cell tower. Okay, so we're about in the uh, center there, pretty darn close. Eh, let me, I can probably tweak it just a little bit more. And the wind is definitely blowing things around. So I'm going to go, I'm going to click on the little uh, Android looking icon down here. And I'm going to choose orbit or circle, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, so you have to go to the central point first. So we're setting center right now let me uh let me see if i it gives me a target there so i'm going to see if i can get it exactly Ooh, it's tough it's tough guys that's as close as i'm going to get setting center and then we pull back for our radius so so let's back the drone off Seventy feet. That's probably good enough. Pick the gimbal up just a little, uh, and then uh, so we're setting radius. And now uh, I'm going to set it at uh, free. And uh, my understanding is that I can set a point of interest by just drawing a square around it. So we're going to try that. Uh, so clockwise. So you know, I don't know if I have to. Uh, if I do it before I click go or not but yeah so let's click go and so it looks like it's got it yeah so it didn't it, that was that was a little bit uh, a little bit strange you know because usually when you select and a point of interest and look at how it's it's growing yeah so it lost it yeah yeah so we're gonna stop the orbit okay so uh, so I'm not sure uh, you know maybe I didn't do that correctly I think I did uh, but typical of the point of interest on this uh, on this drone it it just doesn't track very well so I would say the manual mode of that is probably the way to go let's see we're at 58 percent battery let's uh, let's bring it back here and uh, we'll try uh, we'll try some tracking the wind has kind of died down So I'm going to uh, leave the Canon camera here and go out into the field and uh, hopefully the wind has died down enough I can use the audio off my iPhone. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I want to try it first is uh, profile mode. Uh, so. I had some people that were telling me that I 
uh, you know that 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 it works great. Well, it hasn't ever worked very well for me. Uh, but we're going to go into profile, and what the drone should do is is uh, keep up with me as I'm walking from the side. So profile, and I'm going to draw the uh, rectangle and hit go. And let's see how it does. And the drone is doing fine, tracking me. Now, what I'm gonna say is if I walk towards the drone, it should move to my profile, right? Well, it doesn't. So the, the camera's just following me down. And then if I walk underneath it, it'll just lose me so you know I guess it kind of works as long as you just walk in front of the drone uh, but the drone will not keep you in profile if you walk towards it so uh, that's just something to, to keep in mind let me pick the camera back up sorry about that uh, so another one that I want to try is uh, there's another version in Smart Track called Lock. And if I understand that correctly, it will lock onto me and then I can fly the drone to whatever position I want around me. So let's try Lock. And let's. Uh, yeah, so you can. So it'll circle you according to this. So let's... Okay, so what it does is it circles you. So let's... We're giving it a radius here. And it is. This is working great. This is kind of a cool function. So you could actually have the drone circle you. Now what I'm going to warn you about, about this, is obviously this drone has no obstacle avoidance so you set that radius watch where you're walking because you could literally uh, fly the drone into a tree or, or, or something else so uh, so heck that worked real well and I think I think like I could if I bring I think I can bring it in Yeah, no, that stopped it, but it still keeps the camera on me. So that's kind of cool. So that's the other thing you can do with this. So, so, uh, it, it, you know, if I just walk around, the drone is staying in one spot, and it'll keep it'll keep the camera camera on me. So that's like a cameraman function, and that would be useful if you're filming something, if you're doing something in your yard, and you want the drone to track you. That would be handy as heck. And by the way, the wind has come back up and I'm sure you can probably hear it on my iPhone and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but the drone is staying pretty damn steady. So, so that's great. Okay, so let's get out of that. I wanna try, uh, there's another form. There's one more form of, uh, of the smart track that is called trace. And that is where it's supposed to follow you from behind. So, let's try that. Yeah, no, it didn't, that didn't, that didn't get me for some reason. Raise the camera up just here, just a little. Okay, let's try that one more time. I don't know if it's, uh, if it doesn't see enough contrast, although it sure should. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know why it won't grab me. Let me, uh, I'm going to go, uh, and face the sun and maybe that'll give it more contrast okay so I'm facing the sun now 
Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get out of here and let's try that again. So I don't know why it's not grabbing me there. It did, you know, on those other two modes. Let's try that again. Trace. Yeah, I, I don't know. So let's try one of the other modes. Uh, let's let's go back to uh, the profile. I, I, why why it won't grab me in that one? Yeah. So for whatever reason, uh, <laughs> it just won't it it, it won't uh, it won't trace me. So let's try that again. So I've I've had people tell me that you got to get your shadow and everything. So I mean I don't know. That's that's as good of a box as I can draw, I guess. Well, I'm not going to worry about that. So uh, let's see. We're down to 33% battery here. Let's take one more look at the uh, at the horizon. We're going to punch straight up. So we are up about a couple hundred feet now. Let's pick up that camera. I don't know. I'm saying that horizon looks pretty good. Let me uh, yaw it around facing uh, west. Yeah, and you, you see a little bit of a tilt uh, as I yaw. But uh, it seems like as soon as I stop the yaw, it gradually uh, straightens itself out. So, as you can see, yeah, so it's telling me that it wants to come home. So we're not, we might as well uh, see if we can do a return to home now. Uh, and, and try a precision landing. So uh, I'm gonna hit return to home. Uh, well, heck, let's do it on the controller here. You flip this switch. And we're in return to home mode. You see the drone immediately respond. And it's high enough now that it does not have to climb in altitude. Uh, so. And the cool thing about this drone is, unlike uh, the Hubson Zeno, you don't have to turn off the camera. You don't have to do anything like that. It uh, it uses its downward facing sensor uh, to look for that uh, landing pad. And it says not detected now, but you watch as it gets lower, it'll find it. And of course the wind just came up. So I'm gonna get out of the way of the camera. Let's take a peek down with the gimbal. Oh, we're pretty close. And boy, we got a heck of a wind going here, though. So that's a handy feature on the five-way switch. So it's saying that it found the landing pad, and it's looking really... No, not detected. No, I'm sorry. Not detected, but it's damn... It's right on the pad, but it's saying not detected. So you guys uh, saw that. We had landing pad uh, not detected all the way down, uh, and but it still got really close. So that's how good the GPS is on this drone. Uh, and by the way, another function, and I talked about it before, is you notice that it shut off recording as soon as it lands. That saves your file, saves you from having a corrupted file. Uh, I love that feature. I wish all drones did it. Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, let me get everything shut down and we will do a very quick conclusion. Alright guys, the uh, Femi uh, X8 SE. Uh, this drone just uh, continues to impress. I always have a lot of fun when I fly this thing. Uh, so, today's flight. Yes, we saw some improvement uh, on the horizon, although it's not perfect. Uh, when you yawed or 
banked it would off and throw it off a little bit it would come back eventually uh, that adjustment that I did seemed to help now to be fair on a windy day like today that's going to affect your gimbal more than on a calm day uh, and, and it did uh, I, at least I believe it did uh, so uh, yeah I mean you know it's 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 much better uh, that is really something that that Femi ought to be able to solve I mean other drones do it so I mean Hubson does it. a lot of, of the original Hubson Zeno which is a much cheaper drone has just a solid flat horizon so I'm sure that I'm hoping on the 2020 version of this that they will get that solved uh, so then with regard to uh, the follow me functions uh, we went through them there and we had some success and we had some failure uh, the the uh, the profile we showed how if you're at a profile it'll keep you in profile but you can walk it won't if you walk towards the drone or in a different direction it no longer keeps you in profile so it's only good if you're walking one direction and yes the drone will keep you in profile but you can't you can't walk towards it uh, and then the uh, the I can't think of the name of the the third uh, I'll put it on the screen here but it's basically like a cameraman mode where it the drone uh, keeps its focus on you and that could be really handy you, you know if you were wanted to use the drone like this as a cameraman and you're working on a project or something the drone would keep you in center of frame the whole time and record that video so so that would be pretty cool and then it will circle you uh, you can uh, it has that slider at the bottom and as you walk the drone will orbit you uh, now like I said I'm gonna urge people to be careful with that because you literally could uh, walk the drone right into a tree or something you need to be careful of that radius and know where the drones at and don't walk it into this you know because it would it would just go sideways right into a tree it does not have obstacle avoidance so be careful with that now uh, then we went into uh, the other uh, the other mode follow mode or you, you, all these drones name them differently uh, but where it was it follows you from behind and I, I couldn't get the drone to acquire me. I mean, you, you watch me, I tried it several times, so I, I don't know why it wouldn't. Uh, you know, you can't say that it's because of the clothes I was wearing because it, it acquired me earlier. All of a sudden, it just decided not to work, so yeah. So, so that's not perfect, and to be fair, Femi tells you that it's in beta, and, and it has been ever since I've owned this drone, so I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't, when they say it's in beta, they say that it's still something that they're working on. Now, uh, the we also had limited success with the free form point of interest uh, when when I took it up to to circle the cell phone tower there. Now, I've done that very successfully before by just setting the point of interest, setting a radius, and letting it go, and then you adjust the gimbal, put it in the center. But there's if you put it in free the camera will then uh, lock onto whatever the object is and and continue that radius and it eventually just lost it so I don't know you know obviously the tracking <laughs> that's another tracking function so you know, I, I would just use it in the other function if you're doing an orbit I would use that other function where you're just setting the uh, the radius but uh, yeah, I mean, those are just niggly little things. Uh, it's an awesome drone. It, it, it holds its position so well. Uh, you know, you saw me when I was moving it back and forth here. It kept its height above the ground here, I mean, just perfectly. So these downward facing sensors work pretty good on this guy. Now, when we did the precision landing, I'm not sure why it didn't find the landing pad, uh, but it didn't matter. It still got uh, like, two legs on the or three legs even whatever on the on the landing pad so so hey that's as precise as I need I can tell you that uh, anyway 
really fun drone that, that Femi has given us and uh, the 2020 version promises to be even more robust uh, so I'm really looking forward to it uh, they do it is on sale right now at uh, Banggood I, I don't know how long they're going to keep it on sale I've, I've heard a rumor that it would expire on the 15th of um, uh, April but I don't know that for certain uh, I will put my uh, my affiliate link uh, down below in the description and there's a discount code uh, for Banggood I'll put that in there too and I know it's still active because I got an email from Banggood today showing it is still active so I'll put that discount code in there and uh, that brings the net cost down to 347 bucks and I'm telling you a drone of this caliber for that kind of money is just stunning and and the new uh, the new version has got more range uh, it's got a little bit longer battery life a, a different camera uh, will when I've ordered one and when I get it we'll compare the two and see what's what so hey with regard to the COVID-19 crisis uh, yeah we're still kind of in the middle of that and here in Idaho we're allowed to do some outdoor activities close to home and uh, so I am they you require that you maintain social distancing and uh, we're absolutely doing that uh, what I want to urge everybody to do is to maintain social distancing stay home as much as possible everybody needs to get out and get a little exercise uh, but uh, then be kind to your neighbor uh, you know think about everybody being stressed out right now people that are out of work don't know when they're going to get another paycheck worried about how they're going to buy food pay their rent etc so be kind to your neighbors, be kind to people online, you know, it's so easy. Everybody thinks they're anonymous online. You're not so much, and, and rather than flaming somebody online when you disagree with them about something, hey, either just move on and, and ignore it, or, you know, say something nice. That's even better. So, uh, anyway, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel, out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Most of all, I really appreciate you taking the time to look at this video today. And we absolutely will see you on the next one. Uh, yeah, the Femi X8 SE. I'm, I'm really stoked about that 2020 model. So anyway, we'll see you guys later.